Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another week of Agent Matters, our catch up with representatives of travel agencies to find out how they're working through the coronavirus crisis. I'm Abra Dunsby from TTG, and this week I'll be catching up with a panel I talked to two months ago uh, to find out how they've moved their marketing on uh, now that lockdown has eased somewhat, and also to discuss any challenges that they continue to face. So joining me today for this marketing focused session is uh, James B. Agree, Managing Director of Meon Valley Travel in Petersfield, uh, Kiri Delay, Marketing and Social Media Manager at Mid Counties Co-op Personal Travel Agents, and Kate Holroyd, Director at Mobile Travel Consultancy Strawberry Holidays in Lancashire. Morning to the three of you. Hello. <laughs> And just a reminder to um, those of you watching that the panel will be happy to answer your questions. So please do post them in the comments tab for us to answer. So how is everyone? Um, how have the past eight weeks been for you? Kiri, should we start with you? How are you doing? Yeah, good. We were, we were just saying uh, before we went live that it, it doesn't really feel like it's been eight weeks. It does feel like it's been a, a couple of weeks since we last spoke, but no, all good at myself. Nice to catch up with family and friends from a distance and uh, been nice little events kind of going on that we've, we've had the really nice weather, which has helped mm -hmm. from that aspect of things. Um, in terms of us as a, as a business, we are support team for the, the home workers. We've always had the option to work from home. So that transition from being in the office to being at home hasn't been that difficult. It's been more of the emotional side of things that, you know, we've all had to get together, be there for each other when you've had your tough weeks, when you know, you're missing your family or you've had a bit of claustrophobia or cabin fever being at home. But, you know, we've been saying that the weeks just roll on and on and on. And it's weird to think that we're two months down the line since we last spoke. So, you know, it's good we've been busy, but yeah, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> mm -hmm. How about you, Kate? How are you doing? Very similar, emotionally very up and down. Um, the last week has been especially difficult for me and I've been trying to touch base with some of my colleagues from Global um, just to find out if it was just me, but it was nice to hear it wasn't. Other people had been through the same sort of downs. Um, it can be difficult to stay motivated, can't it, when you feel like that. But with the business, there's definitely been some green shoots and some inquiries and hopefully bookings will follow um, from that. So I'm um, trying to just take the positives where I can at the moment. And James, how are you doing? I, I, I know that you're now open. You opened yesterday, that's right, is it? Well, absolutely, which is a saving grace for me because everyone else is looking so happy and healthy and I, <laughs> I just feel like a fat alcoholic here. Um, the, the, <laughs> the, the saving grace is opening the shop yes, uh, yesterday, which is fantastic for us. On Sunday, when I was just supervising the finish of the deep clean and the sanitizers going in, uh, it was a real joy to see people knocking on the window and knocking on the door saying, can I come in yet? So deeply, deeply encouraging that uh, there seems to be uh, positive, you say green shoots, it's still slow. It's still, you know, there's a long way to go. Oh, they're like that big. <laughs> yeah, there's still, a, and there's still a lot of people that are talking and not yet doing anything. Um, and we're, but we're liking what we see. There's, there, there's not too many people that are upset about the historical uh, challenges that they've got with getting their refunds. Uh, we get new refunds every month coming in. Now to actually be on the high street is a boost for the rest of the staff as well. Um, and we're spending quite a bit of time chasing tour operators. We've still got a lot of furloughed staff as well uh, for what is starting to see. I'm not myself seeing 2020 bookings coming in, but we are seeing inqu inquiries for 2021. So uh, we're ever hopeful that this lovely business we're in is going to come back. Absolutely. Um, and so in terms of your marketing then, um, has the focus changed since I last spoke to you those eight weeks ago? And, and sort of if so, how? Um, Kate, can we just start with you for that one? Uh, yeah, it's definitely gone shifted to the more long term, you know, as, as James said, customers are looking forward to 2021 and I am as well. So a lot of my activity has been around building relationships and partnerships with bloggers. Um, I've also been doing 
quite a bit of PR, podcasting, um, a lot of SEO work on the website as well. Um, you know, looking at my best performing pages, what can I do to improve them and get, you know, conversion um, from that. And, um, you know, as we've had more time on our hands, as, as the initial sort of shock and um, administration has kind of weaned off, it's been a prime opportunity to look at um you know those longer term relationships and seo like i say um and um yeah looking more at maintaining those relationships sending postcards to clients past and present um you know a chat bot as well developing a chat bot um for the facebook page so yeah wow sounds like you've been very busy <laughs> um how about you james what's the focus been at me on valley well, we've um, our, all our, our communication through our newsletters, which has been our primary communication through emails and newsletters. We've got some Facebook coverage. We've got a lot on Instagram, but that's more effective for the individual consultants who are still working to be communicating on a much more authentic one-to-one -one basis rather than our marketing team. But everything on the uh, newslet newsletter side is all more magazine style. Uh, the blogs are quite right, same as with Kate, the, the blogs we've evolved into being our own content rather than that which we steal from elsewhere. And we've found that the time has been used very effectively in finding bloggers at value where we can get you know, a fantastic destination blog written, which is all about us talking to somebody as if, as if they were a journalist. And they put it back into language to us that makes perfect sense, suddenly sounds all very concise and readable, but also helps as far as the SEO is concerned changing over now from offers or then it was offers to dis destination focus tv programs travel books um uh, uh, webinars and and such that we were introducing people to rather than specific price of uh, targeted uh, offers and now we're start starting to see it um, come back as far as our, our own language is concerned to start talking about 2021 offers yes um, and how about you Kerry? what's the focus been at the ptas yeah, we've quite similar, really. We've focused on more of the soft marketing and I guess where we've transitioned from doing more of a sales focused and what we would be running up to in, in kind of the late seasons, that soft marketing that we had with our travel inspiration, we moved more to a lot of the nostalgic marketing that you can do. So, you know, thinking back to when I was at university 12 years ago, I did my dissertation on um, fairy non-bio and their nostalgic marketing in the recession. And, you know, those types of practices, it comes to life now in a real life situation. So, you know, where you've got the nostalgia of being on holiday and us talking about the experiences, a lot of the marketing relates back to that. So a lot of the digital marketing that we did with um, videos and on social and content that we wanted on the website, on an emails, it was all about just homing in on those experiences and, you know, making people not disconnect from wanting to go away, have that, you know, that, that warm feeling inside that, you know, you remember those memories when you're going away and just tying in what people miss about going on holiday. So, you know, when we were coming up with our, our email marketing plan, we, we try to theme everything a bit clever so that you know you want to open up your emails and see what email was coming through we did uh, one of our top performing one was dishy, dishy destinations so you know you know when you go away on holiday and you have some really good food you're like oh, do you know we have to make that when we go back so we tried to relate offers to destinations to activities that they could do at home because you know about two months ago we still were in the thick of it so using some of that nostalgia and emotional marketing to kind of keep people related to the brand and making them feel like they you know they want to get back to that place of being on holiday hmm. okay well it sounds like you've all been very busy in, in the last uh, two months um, and Kiri you mentioned to me earlier that you ran a customer survey back in April I think it was yeah. um, what was some of the findings of that survey and how have they helped your PTAs to promote their offers yeah, so we ran the survey um, to really kind of get an idea of how customers feel because, you know, I think we're day in, day out, we're dealing with operators, we understand travel and, you know, we know how we react to the situations, but we wanted to get into a position where we weren't blind going into our marketing and we had a bit more rhyme and reason as to what we wanted to give them because, you know, we, you can pluck out a few people that say they want to go away you know, as soon as restrictions have been lifted, but we wanted to put that into a survey so we had data to work from. So, you know, the survey was based on one 
when people once the restrictions have been lifted sorry so you know the largest percentage everyone wanted to do a beach holiday but then we had those pockets of you know there was custom 38 percent of those respondents said that they want to do a city break so you know we kind of took that and we've done a lot of the marketing on you know february departures some of the krakow budapest barcelona's those types of city breaks and you know they just rocketed because the price point's so attractive at the minute we added our own personal touches on there with excursions some of the tools which you wouldn't you know typically get on you know TripAdvisor or see online something which is a bit different and packaging that up so it's an offer which they can't really refuse so you know we kind of took that data to say okay well this is what they want but you know in terms of what our personal travel agents deliver you know some of their product is part of you know offering experiences and you know those holidays that you don't see on tv or you know see as an offer so we have had about 14 15 percent of the respondents said that they want to do a bucket list holiday so northern light singapore and bali you know those bookings they just rocketed i think we did 30 bookings on singapore and bali as a marketed on the bucket list trips and you know there's an appetite for it and we did quite well on it brilliant yeah they sound like really great results um Kate, I know last time uh, we talked about as a, how as a home worker you have to juggle lots of different elements of the job, which includes marketing. So how much time would you say uh, you're spending on marketing each week? Can you sort of put a time frame on it? On it? And is it more, like has that ramped up or is it the same as, as the last time we spoke, would you say? It's definitely the same as last time we spoke. Um, it's about consistency and that's the message I'm getting back as feedback from my marketing is just that, you know, people, they're, they're pleased, to see, <laughs> pleased to see me almost on the LinkedIn profile, on Instagram, you know, they're, they're, they like to get that, you know, interaction with me daily or, um, you know, a couple of times a week at least. And just to, just to say, you know, I'm still here, I'm still showing up, I'm still feeling positive about uh, you know the outcome uh, roughly I spend probably about 15 to 20 hours probably on my marketing if you include like the relationship building and the partnership building and all of that as well um, so yeah it's pretty much stayed the same throughout um, the 12 weeks um, and the next couple of weeks it'll increase as you know as retail stores are opening I've got to compete against that obviously and um, I've got my VIP appointment book and um, which I set up to say you know when we see things change would you like to start to talk to me about your future travel plan so that's kind of in motion as well I'm going back to those um, clients and getting those booked in now and um, so and then with the launch of the chat bot as well um, I'm just going to increase um, activity ever so slightly to encourage that as well for the launch at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um and to all three of you, really, has, would you say the tone has changed in, in your marketing? James, you've mentioned how the sort of content's changed. Has the tone within that changed too? Very much so. Uh, it's become a lot more personal. So this is, a, this is a, per, a business all about personality. And it's amazing how we've changed from a lot of, even though we do a lot of blogs of destinations and we've used the time to get another 30 destinations up in, our, in, in the information the blogs that we sent out it's still now it's a personal experience much more personal experience that we're sending to the outside world uh, it's about feelings and uh, what would you say to your friends and what would you say uh, so everything that we've all talked about previously about what you should do we started doing even better and smarter i think now but added in other elements of well-being the planet the environment who would have thought we'd be talking about saving the environment and isn't it nice that there's not so many planes flying around which breaks my heart to say it but it's a lovely <laughs> thing to experience um, so from that point of view, it's just reality. It's authentic. And uh, so I think there's a lot more uh, uh, authenticity to the communication that we're sending to the outside world. And it's human. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Kate, how about you? Would you say that tone? Yeah, changed? yeah, I definitely agree with James. And I've not shied away from, um, you know, those more negative feelings and letting clients know, you know, when it's troubling. I mean, I'm doubling down on strawberry holidays, and I'm telling, I'm being, you know, I'm telling people that I'm letting them know that I've taken the bounce back loan. I'm really doubling down and raising the stakes for me. And um, you know, I spoke about it in the podcast that interview that I did. That you know, COVID was the perfect opportunity for me to close strawberry and say 
you know what covid had me be and and you know it'd be a, a great of you know as an entrepreneur to say it's you know it's not my failure it was circumstances but you now to double down and, and and raise the stakes um, and and let people know that and i think they are react, reacting to that and responding to that and they you know they've got their own businesses themselves and um or they know somebody that does so they they feel it with you and i agree with james it's about making that connection and making it really personal Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and how about you Kiri would you say the tone has changed your end yeah I think it's kind of the, the key word that I think everyone in the travel industries took on board just kind of keeping that personal aspect and making sure that you know you as a person come out from the brand you know everyone you know connects with people face to face especially when you've got avenues like social people like people and they connect over social when they get to know you and your brand and sometimes when you show your vulnerability and you know say this is me this is my business and you know this is how i've been affected with covid aside to every industry it goes to show that you know your personal side the the shy the side that shows you know where you're being human and showing that you know i'm kind of there by your side it, it's 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 you know it's it's good because we're fortunate that you know, with our home workers, they have that platform to be quite open with them. And I think when you're talking with your customers and you can say to them, you know, talking to them in the first person, asking them about, you know, their circumstances and building up the relationships that way, I think that's when you kind of take your brand to another level because you've kind of been through something quite historical together. And hopefully it will <clears throat> encourage loyalty as well. I think if you if you kind of make it through this together, then you probably have a, a very loyal client there. So fingers crossed for that. And uh, Kate, I know you mentioned that you've been on the radio um, a lot since we've spoken before. So what did that involve, and how did it come about? Um, so it involves it pretty straightforward a, a phone and a way of recording it um recording my um audio this side so i use my husband's mobile to make a voice note and then i'm on the phone um with the journalist and it simply came about um from um, building relationships on twitter and linkedin with journalists um a local journalist um, and it's you know just commenting here and there on what they were doing and having conversations online and then when flybe went into administration in march she recommended me to her news team colleagues which just happened to be um capital fm heart and um, hits radio um, and yeah so they contact me and said will you talk to us about flyby and then that's just been a regular occurrence when you know travel is a, a heavy news story like with the air bridges so that's what i was talking about in quarantine um, last week and then bbc lancashire came about because um, I went on a tour, they were doing um, a tour of the radio station and every editor that I came across, I just threw my card at them and said, if you ever have a travel story and you want, you know, a travel um, expert, you know, or you want a travel agent's point of view. So yeah, so that turned into one feature, which turned into monthly. And then when the news breaks and it's a travel related story, I get that phone call. So again, it's relationships and um, they're, the, they're the key there with the radio. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a great way of building your own personal brand as well. So yes, it's been it's been fantastic. Yeah. And then you mentioned the chatbot as well that you're working on. Um, can you tell me a bit more about how how that works and how you've moved that on um, in in lockdown? Yeah, well, it started a friend of mine on Facebook. She commented, um, Lou Berry of Chatterbox Social. She commented on um, my Facebook live and said, you're encouraging people to subscribe, but it's they have to go to your website and it's a little bit difficult. So how about you get them to comment email in the live and then we can set up a chatbot that would then encourage them to subscribe. So that's how it started and then we started chatting more and bouncing ideas. I love it when you find a someone you can bounce ideas off um, and we were bouncing ideas off things and we've developed and um, we're developing sorry a quiz and um, to help first time cruisers or cruisers that are looking for a new cruise line um, and it's going to be um, you know a way of them filtering down and um, their choices and um, with the cruise lines and then I'm developing it a little bit further and um, for post travel so I'll send out a postcard when people arrive home with a little QR code to scan the code and it sends them down 
down a funnel to leave a review and um, just to help my reviews and hopefully encourage more people um, to come my way but I think you know these elements where you can drive people through a funnel and um, you know without the direct touch initially but it feels very personal the chatbot I mean she's, she's asked me to create an avatar and a personality and what words would it use and what words wouldn't it use it's going to feel very personal to the client but for me it can just work in the background and then once they've got to a certain stage in the funnel bang that's when I come in and we start the conversation um, for real and hopefully um, down the conversion funnel. Oh brilliant sounds like a great idea. Um, James I know you mentioned uh, we, we've been speaking about your newsletters last time and you mentioned them this time as well um, are they still are the, is the frequency still once a week I know they were once a week last time we spoke and are they still doing well for you in terms of open rate and, and those kind of stats? Yes, they are. Um, it's, it's, but it's still static. The crazy thing is the only time we've had a blip has been down um, has been when the announcement of the quarantine measures just a week, just over a week ago. And, uh, and then it's blipped down again for a week and now it's picked back, back up again. So our open rates, we're, we're very pleased. What's really made the difference now is the greater reach of more people that have actually been joining on our, our database so the more people we're talking with the more people that are recommending us to a friend of, or, or uh, finding us on uh, the internet or being able to uh, come across us as far as the newsletters that we're doing and even now we've taken the, the bigger step of something we've never done before which is to buy in lists of all the email addresses of all you know, 40,000 households around our local area to see how we can now use the expertise and the lessons that we've learned about more video, more destination experience, more, more about quality, comfort, security, and be able to pass that message out to the local community to remind them that we're, we're there on the high street. Um, it's certainly something that I think as a spin-off from everybody realizing that the delivery driver is actually a human being and is saving your life by bringing your shopping to you, and that um, somebody who's working out on the, on the streets is actually still um, putting themselves at risk for us, and these are one-man bands, these are small businesses, these are people keeping going, but these are individuals, even for large companies and organizations. Um, it's meant that we've suddenly realized that the, that, that humanity side to everything needs uh, as much pushing as possible. So with the, our data, yes, thankfully it's grown. The reach has grown as well, and we've decided that we're gonna leverage that to best effect as well, um, because now we can see the true value in it. So a, a definite lesson learned there. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And I know last time we spoke, you weren't posting offers. You were a bit cautious about that. Has that changed now? <clears throat> well, um, you know, the funny thing is the time that we're mentioning money at the moment is to bring to people's attention that it's only a few months ago that we were the that travel agents were the Antichrist and you might as well deal direct. Well, who would ever have imagined that the safest place to put your money now is a travel agent and <laughs> the safest place to get the best advice is a travel agent. And the best place to get variety and choice and somebody who understands what they're talking about for free is a travel agent. So I think ultimately there's been this sort of uh, light bulb moment for the outside world to realize that travel agents aren't the people you avoid. They're the ones that you need. And, uh, and we've, we're professional buyers on behalf of the customer rather than just salesmen on behalf of the airline and the tour operator. And Kate, I know you, you mentioned that you don't tend to post a lot of offers generally. Um, has that changed at all in the last few weeks? Are you posting any at all? Um, nothing price led, but very much itinerary driven. So if I come across an offer that the itinerary is great, then absolutely I'll put that on there. Partly because of the risk of the price getting outdated, but partly because um, I, I want to make sure that people are seeing the value in, in, in the itinerary and it's the itinerary that, that is sold. But I completely agree with what James said there. You know, our value as travel agents is definitely peaking. So the offering is definitely that, you know, I'm at the end of the phone, you know, during crises like this and also, you know, drones over Gatwick, you know, I'm there 24 seven. I definitely think, you know, that's more of the offering that I'm pushing forward. And Kiri, I know you, you've been posting offers uh, for a while now and you've had quite a lot of success with that. Um, how would you say bookings are doing generally for the PTAs? You mentioned it a bit earlier. Have you got any sort of stats that you can share in terms of um, stuff that people are sharing on social and, and, and that has had success? Yeah, we've, it's weird, isn't it? Because I, I guess from James and Kate's point of view, it's, you know, it's kind of the value of the, the travel agent and, you know, the, from our side of things, it's, 
the offers that's kind of been driving people in to, to make the bookings. But with our new bookings, what we've seen that trend line shift where we've had the, the COVID-19 rebooks that we've been tracking and then our new bookings, we've seen that kind of overtake. And, you know, over the last four weeks or so, 71% of our new bookings were driven from social. So 39% of that coming from Facebook alone, it is, it's quite significant numbers. And what we've, it's not that it's just been a, a one-time spike as well. We've seen that it's consistently each week been over 25%. And where we've got some of those higher value bookings like the Singapore and Bali, or we've been doing some of the bucket list Northern Lights expeditions, which includes all of the tours and kind of gives that extra value of, you know, when you're booking a holiday like this, it's the security of having a travel agent behind you. And, you know, your Facebook page can show that split of, your 50-50% of offers, but then what you deliver as a personal travel agent as well, it, it works well together and kind of builds up that ladder. So in terms of our departure month, when I was looking last week at our stats, it's May 2021, that's the highly dominated month that's bringing in the sales for social bookings. So when you're doing, you know, 230,000 just off social alone with some of those offers, it's it's weird to think that you know we're in the middle of a pandemic but these offers are generating inquiries which potentially might not relate to the inquiry that they've um, initially asked for if they've seen an offer but it could potentially transpire into something later down the line which could be a bigger value because they value me having a travel agent to look after that booking especially if you've got family involved or if it's a bigger holiday that you want to do next year and you don't have that security of doing it online. So it sounds like those inquiries have increased as lockdowns sort of eased and, and travel restrictions have eased. Is that fair to say, Kiri? Yeah, and it's interesting as well because we've been hanging on to the FCO advice. We've got the barriers of insurance. We've also got to think of air bridges. So, and you know, any day when they do their update at five o'clock and you know, something's fun in the media, the 10 o'clock news about you can't go to this destination, this destination, it does have a negative impact when you're building some of your social offers. But I think where we've had a really good um, weather the last few weeks, people have seen the light at the end of the tunnel. They're finally getting to the point where, do you know what, potentially we could have a, a break in, in autumn. So last week we saw some pockets of family bookings in October where people probably thinking, do you know what, October half term, four or five months away, maybe we'll take the risk and go away. So you know, it will be interesting to see that trend of people that want to go away abroad, but then there's also the domestic tourism side of things where they want to do the UK lodge breaks or do some of the lodge staycations or something a bit quirky, which they can book with a personal travel agent as well. Mm -hmm. um, and James, would you say you've seen an increase in inquiries since since some, some, some destinations have opened up their borders and things like that? And if so, have you sort of had to focus on that and, and um, not focused on marketing as much or have you managed to sort of balance the two? Well we have a separate marketing team and uh, it, only a couple of years ago I would have thought that you know we had our existing consultants that did the marketing as well in their time and they balanced between marketing and actual and bookings. Uh, it's still slow I mean 100% increase on 5% volume is still only 10% of the volume that you're doing so from our point of view we're still feeling the pain very much so. Um, but uh, but then we've got a dedicated marketing team. Those open rates, as Kerry quite rightly says, are deeply encouraging at 25 to 27 percent click through rates um, on the um, social media and the, uh, the newsletters that we send out. In comparison to my old insurance days, when we were thrilled with two percent. So this business that we're in is pretty compelling as far as the attraction that it gains with with the public. So we've got something people really love and want so you know what they are looking they will book we are have we, we're, we're up as far as our bookings are concerned but then you know I, I don't want to say that we're we're doing great because we're we're still in the doldrums and we're still it's still very slow we were we skipped around and did old choo-choo train noises around the uh, house last week when we took a hundred thousand pound wedding booking for next year and then suddenly thought holy cow everybody's looking at wedding if they're looking at weddings now or their weddings ruined now they're going to be looking at next year. That's a perfect market for it. And it, 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 we sit there looking at each other thinking, 
why like a bunch of numpties did we miss this one so that then again bringing that into the newsletters putting that into the uh, helping helping the open rates don't seem to be affected but i we do have a great faith in the fact that this is bringing starting to bring, gain some traction uh, but everything still for us is 2021 rather than 2020 we're mm -hmm. still very slow and not even really seeing anything for 2020 although people are talking nobody's actually making proper inquiries our inquiries are coming through for 2021 uh, at this time okay how about you kate would you say it's largely 2021 and are you noticing any any increase in inquiries uh, i've definitely had an increase in inquiries and it is it's all 2021 um yeah a lot of people. the frustration is as a ta tailor-made um travel agent obviously we can only look at um secure pricing for 11 months in advance so um you know i've got a lot of people looking for summer 2021 um particularly around disney as well and um, there's quite a lot um with disney questions around disney dining and um you know capacity and things like that so um yeah there's quite a lot of questions still to be asked but definitely 2021 inquiries and they are on the up yeah okay that's good and i imagine um all of you, all your teams, um, uh, will have had to have dealt with some tricky t customers at this point. Um, has, has it, how have you managed to preserve your sort of brand reputation during this time? Has that been tricky or, um, Kiri, should we start with you um, 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 in terms of the personal travel agents there? Yeah, well, it's funny because, you know, you can understand from, well, from my perspective, somebody that, you know, uh, thinks the marketing strategy and, you know how that's going to be delivered to the agents but for them in their shoes it can be a nerve-wracking time for you know them to have customers on the end of the phone it can be it can cause a lot of anxiety and it can be quite a, an emotional time for them so to have answers to those it's you know it's about being prepared so you know having the conversation with them about rebooking the holiday when you know that they're going to ask them for a refund um, what we tried to do was we held a panel um, quite early on with a handful of our agents and they were able to offer advice and give their first-hand experiences for dealing with those situations because sometimes, you know, as much as you can offer your advice, sometimes when you've been, had somebody that's gone through it and, you know, they said, oh, well, you know, in this situation, this is what we've told them to say and, you know, just to handhold them through it, that's helped to have that panel there and, it helps them connect with the questions and sometimes you know it's a bit of a, a longer delivery when somebody's asking for a refund or you know you have got somebody that's a customer that's financial situations might have changed and you know booking a holiday right now is going to be the last of their worries for, for next year so that panel really helped to kind of guide them through and maybe have some grips in their mind that when they answer that phone this is what they're prepared to say because sometimes you know going off on a whim might not be the right direction to take for the, for the phone call from a, a tricky customer mm -hmm. um, and how about you kate definitely i mean the conversations that we've had to have with clients has been they've just been all over the place and really difficult you know because it, like like kiri says everyone's circumstances are different you know we're using different operators and um, it's you know a sense of frustration of the client and of our own because we're acting as an agent you know as the middleman it's you know it's very difficult um um, sort of navigating both of those and for me it's been about communication and transparency so this whole um, situation has made me rethink you know how um, how clear I am with clients around who is providing the holiday and um, you know also looking at my providers and maybe narrowing that down based on experience during this time and um, I know that's definitely happening you know at a larger scale with global but also with myself but just that you know I sent a, an email yesterday to client to all of my clients I, I sent it to everybody on the list because I wanted that transparency and that level of communication with with the whole list saying this is the situation with refunds you know I act as an agent I am the middleman your money is here you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah and um, very much and that's going to continue is that you know effort to be transparent and communicate as much as possible mm -hmm. and what what about for me on Valley Travel James well you know it's been real tough times as far as dealing with the customers that have had you know I'd be pissed off uh, with a lot of the things that we've had to deal with we've got 28 percent of our clients uh, have taken credit notes 18% of rebooked and 54% of wanted cash refunds and had cash refunds. 
chasing up those tour operators, you sort of, you find out who are really struggling and who are really supported, who suddenly furlough all their staff in their department, in their refunds department. Um, and, and you find that people like gold medal travel to if only um, uh, Emirates holidays are brilliant in their support and they've been a lot more supportive than a lot of other people. And then you find that, you know, the, the ones that you can't just can't get hold of, which have been, uh, that don't assist really. We are very, very lucky and privileged that, um, I've got a great team of people, but we've also got a demographic of customers who are quite intelligent people, and we're very, very lucky with our, our, type, of, our type of client. But they also have very logical and intelligent arguments that they bring to the party. So sometimes it, it does actually help to say, yeah, you know what, I know it's rubbish, and this is what we're having to face. But thank God you've got us there in the middle helping you out rather than you being totally left high and dry to the degree that we had one only yesterday coming back with an email that sent in that just said, you're rubbish, you're not responding to every, anything at all, and I think it's disgraceful the way that you're treating me. So, of course, the manager, take, we take every, all the complaints away from the consultants, and they're put to a manager who's uh, absolutely fantastic with this stuff, straight back on the phone, straight onto the customer, saying, what on earth's going on here? We, we, this is just not us. It doesn't sound like us. To which the response she, she got was, oh, well, sorry, I meant that for another travel agent on how they were dealing with me. So, oh God, no, 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 you're reassured, you know, we're with you for life. So, funny enough, just having that courage to ring the customer and face it head on um, has been its own godsend, but boy, it's not been easy. Mm. Okay, um, I've just noticed we've actually had a question through, have we? I think we can... Oh, um, it's more of a comment, really. How can cruise companies offer holidays? Okay, yeah, it's more a question for, for cruise operators, I think, really, but thanks for the comment, Anthony. Um, so the other question I was going to ask you, oh yeah, so it, you've all been, I think it's clear, uh, it's fair to say that you've all been uh, pretty innovative with your marketing during these tough times and especially having to deal with so many other elements. Um, so how important would you say it is to be innovative right now? And where do you get that inspiration from to be an innovator? And Kate, should we start with you for this one? Oh, great. <laughs> this was what I, what, one of the toughest questions to prepare. Um, I'm, I guess I'm really fortunate in that I've, you know, I've had a marketing background. Um, I was in mark I've been in marketing over a decade before I started Strawberry Holidays, um, and I always described myself um, as a sponge, like just uh, you know, constantly taking on, um, you know information as much as possible and I, I've carried that through as a business owner you know taking opportunities to learn through webinars through um, LinkedIn you know there's quite a lot on there if you if you um, you know where you're looking and what hashtags to use um, and just yeah I just try and take on as much as possible and then you know filter out what I think could work for me and, and take inspiration from brands that aren't um, necessarily in travel as well and um, as a as a personal travel agent i look to people that have personal brands so i mentioned in the last panel and um, you know sarah aquasombi who's noble business school and um, andrew and pete of atomic and um, you know they very much help um with that innovation and 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 to keep that um, creativity um, and it's just yeah i read a lot as well i read um a lot of um non-fiction <laughs> marketing and self-help books and I take quite a lot of inspiration from that one of the things I love about travel is it's so good for people's well-being so if you're talking about wellness and you know mindfulness and things like that which I'm, I'm quite um you know passionate about um privately um you know I, I bring quite a lot of those elements into what I'm doing in terms of my marketing as well that's really interesting. Um, how about you, James? I know you said you, you've got obviously a marketing team, but um, you are still an innovator nonetheless. So um, yeah, how, how would you, uh, where do you get your sort of inspiration from as an innovator? Um, well, we, we found that when we were talking to the bank about, about getting loans to be able to su survive and so on, that everything was all talking about cash. And then we passed that on to the marketing team and they came back with their own cash statement, which stood for copy and steal shamelessly. <laughs> uh, so what we found is that we've taken great inspiration funny enough not only from places where people have got it right but watching in so many different areas where everybody else in your opinion gets it wrong and then just do the opposite of that it's been quite inspirational from our point of view to to take those to trust our own instincts as much as anything to think that's rubbish let's do the opposite to that 
And we've learned a lot also in marketing terms on the practicalities from, uh, oh, from <laughs> Kiri's getting a, she's got a booking coming through. <laughs> um, we've learned a lot also from um, the marketing team on Google's digital garage. So this is a fantastic resource in the background to let you know how to be able to use the tools for uh, marketing through uh, online, which has been a, a, an absolute godsend for us to be able to farm that message out on the digital garage and the training from the marketing team to all the consultants so they can understand what's going on, what the language is, what the narrative is, what the company tone is. And then um, also that's enabled them to understand what works and what doesn't work, to feed that back centrally and just keep punching in to the marketing team lots of things that they've spotted elsewhere, just saying, this is good, this is rubbish. So that collation of that, all, the, all that information from the net um, has been absolutely invaluable for us to copy and steal shamelessly. <laughs> Brilliant, fantastic. Um, and Kiri, how about you? How do you encourage the, the PTAs to be innovative and where do you get your inspiration from? Yeah, I think like what James is saying, it's a key time for marketers to really show their their expertise and kind of value to a business and I think sometimes when it comes to the travel agents when I started before this role I was outside of travel and that's one thing that I I always do I always say to myself you know don't get too wrapped into the travel side of things you need to take your hat off swap it with a customer and think okay well what does a customer want to see what would a customer engage with what would you do to really kind of get that brand of your face of the brand over to your customers so that's one thing I always say to them just to take a step back and just think okay well what would be inspiring to a customer or what would you see that would make me want to carry on being engaging with them because it it can be quite touch and go with some of the stuff which you're putting out there you know I think now that you're really stripped back you haven't got so many meetings going on and it's a bit more you've got that freedom to be more innovative you you've got that opportunity now to look at different avenues and different ways to be a bit more creative so you're not doing just your traditional marketing you're thinking of new ideas to help your business in the long term and um, one of the things which we're talking about at the minute and you know some of our PTAs are doing it at the, um, at the time now is with everyone doing zoom quizzes with their families you know we've got the older generation that are quite comfortable doing facetimes and whatsapp calls and being more face-to-face from digital because they're not able to see their families. I think rewind back to a year ago, we would have said some of our PTAs, would you do a, a video appointment with your customers to go through the, the tour itinerary or to go through different parts of you know, their quotes? They probably would have said no, but now they've took that leap and said, yeah, actually that's fine because I do a, a Zoom call every weekend with my grandchildren to, to, you know, to keep up with them. So it's just thinking about ways you can be in it with your marketing, but then also ways to help your business in the future. Say as if there is a second wave, we'll be prepared for that because we know that we've got the technology there to support them and it's, it's branded, it's professional. We're giving ourselves a cost in the right way. We, we've kind of took the step that we want to take rather than just copying other people. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, I'm noticing the time again. So just final question, but you don't all need to answer it. Just one of you can jump in if, if, if you don't all have to answer it, basically. But is there any brand, and it doesn't really necessarily need to be travel related, that you think is responding to the crisis well and is getting the tone right and that we can perhaps learn from in some way? Um, so yeah, over to you guys. Oh, who's going to go first? <laughs> I, think, I think we've all got to take a leaf out of Joe Wicks's book, uh, P with Joe. You know, his intention was purely to help people's mindset and to get people moving, you know, during this time in their home without equipment. And I think, you know, he, he's the epitome of what Kiri said of putting the customer at the heart of um, what he was trying to achieve. So, yeah, um, P with Joe has been a big influence um, for me during this time. Fantastic. Yeah, and a lifesaver for us, I think, has been an advantage. They've been amazing as a trade association on the leisure side of the business, focus on business travel, but advantage on the leisure side with daily videos, updates, fully informing us, webinars, training, market intelligence, HRPR. They really put in the, the hard yards so that we could get on with survival while they got on with making sure that we didn't trip ourselves up. 
Okay. I think I'll, I'll go off on a spin of something and I'm only saying this from a creative side of things, so bear with me, I haven't lost the plot. <laughs> um, I don't know if you saw, but where, where we've got all the kind of restaurants and takeaways, all of those having to go on lockdown, KFC, they oh, did a really yeah. clever campaign. Yeah. So if everyone knows the Colonel has his special secret 11 recipe um, ingredients. So what they did is they created a, a multi-channel campaign called Rate My KFC. So what they did is they got the whole nation involved in this challenge to create their own KFC at home. And then they post pictures of it. They had families that were making you know, DIY uh, takeaway boxes to really recreate a KFC. And uh, then they had a member from their head office, because assuming most of them were on furlough, that was rating them based on the, the look of it, whether it was juicy enough, whether it kind of got the KFC look of it. But it's really clever in the way that, you know, their restaurants are closed, head office must have been on furlough, but they had all that consumer content that they were regurgitating. And it's quite clever because it was still keeping their brand in their mind. So you'll still think, oh, that's not doesn't taste quite like KFC, you know, KFC does have a, a particular a, a taste to it. So it's good. It's a nice way that they kind of just changed it and made sure that people said, you know, what, it's, that's not really the brand, but you know what, that's our attempt. And it's a good way to engage it. And what they did that was really, really clever was when they launched their partnership with Deliveroo, they had a montage of all the children's pictures, adult pictures, of all their KFC, and then they said, don't worry guys, we'll take it over from here and you can yeah. order de yeah. delivery. Yeah. So I thought it was really clever. Yeah. Completely yeah. different, completely different to travel, but travel you know, death. something yeah. you can, Brilliant. can take Brilliant. away. Makes me fancy a takeaway now, I've got to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <The> Tuesday KFC. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, I think that's all we've got time for. But thanks again for, for being um, a great panel. It's been really interesting to talk to you all. And um, thanks to everyone again for, for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you all again soon. So best of luck to you all. And yeah, chat soon. Thanks. thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.